to Jay Jake Jackets. Gear up to fire the cannon and hit the ice with your host, Jay Ashdown and Jake Gearinger. What's weird is like my age is working in a female, so I was like having my hoodie and like, just sitting in here. I got my socks rolled up. Oh, really? Yeah, it's like it's cold in this part. It's rough. Even though it's like only 70. Right. <laughs> anyway, uh, the boys are back. Yeah, that's right. It's been a while. It's been about a week because you were busy moving back to school. We were busy. We were going to do it on the weekend. And then you got busy I, and whatnot. I, yeah, I just... Ugh. Um, crazy Saturday and then Sunday was awful. I ended up treating myself to some Japanese at the new Japanese place downtown. Mm. Oh, good, good stuff. So good. Um, we're going to start off with an announcement about us and then we're going to get to the big news from this weekend. So J. Jake Jackets now has its own Twitter account, and I'm sure a couple of our listeners, a couple of our buddies follow it already. And uh, I think it's a pretty good idea. So yeah, I like it. <laughs> we'll both be running it. So you'll see either my initials or hit or Jay's initials uh, yeah. tagged at the end of each tweet. And we're going to put it out. For this episode, we're gonna um, announce it on the new Twitter. I will, you know, we'll retweet it. Make sure you guys go follow it. It is at J underscore J underscore Jackets Pod. <laughs> I know it's like a weird, complicated name. Yeah, it's a lot, but it's a little bit of a mouthful to actually say. But there, we'll have like updates on the schedule, which now that you're back at school should be consistent right we should be running Tuesday, Thursday most I'm, of the time. might have to switch because thursdays we have newspaper meetings at night that i gotta go to but that's gonna be in about a couple weeks we can talk about that off air we can figure that out yeah yeah um just as long as we find like some way to have our tuesday show still and then a show near the end of the week yeah tuesday will work perfect just gotta cool. find another day Awesome. So yeah, we'll have a more consistent schedule. We'll keep you guys up to date there on that Twitter account. Obviously still follow us on our personals to just keep up with shenanigans. Yeah, with my life, with my movie reviews. <laughs> yeah, you got movie reviews coming out now, right? Yeah. I, and, uh, I, just I know applied... people have missed them. Sure. I just applied for our buddies at Hockey Hound. You applied? So... Yeah, they're nice. looking for writers and editors and stuff. Nice. So shout out to our buddies there. Um, and I mean, I hope I get to write for you guys. It'd be fun. Right. Anyway, the big, big, petty as hell news that came out this weekend. <laughs> the feud between the Hurricanes and the Canadians is back on. Yeah, it's... It's super interesting because, like, when the when the news first came out, I was laughing my ass off. I was like, "This is so freaking hilarious!" It's one well, of the funniest things that we've seen this entire off season. I think we should explain movie. what's going on because we have our, you know, we're just starting out. A lot of our listeners right now are just like casual people that don't really understand a lot of the ins and outs of this thing. So we should explain like what's an offer sheet and what the hell is going on between the Canadians and the Hurricanes with these offer sheets specifically? Yeah, so a couple of years ago, I think it was 2019, I believe. Yes. Um, Sebastian Ajo was a restricted free agent. Now, obviously, Sebastian Ajo is arguably the, the Hurricanes' best forward, if you want to argue Svechnikov totally fine with that uh, they're both amazing but he was a restricted free agent and montreal signed him to an offer sheet now because sebastian Aho at the time was i believe only 22 
Um, well, what what is an offer sheet? Let's start. There. That's yes. Yeah, so we start there. So he's a restricted free agent. When you're a restricted free agent, that gives teams the ability to qualify you, to tender you a qualifying offer. The qualifying offer, if accepted by the player, is just the same amount of money they made the previous year. So whatever money they made, you know, you, you tender them that, and they remain you know, a property of your team, but they are still a free agent. So they can sign with a team, but you have the opportunity to match it. If you decide not to match it based on the amount of money that they pay the player, you get compensated draft picks. So a couple of years ago, when Aho was a restricted free agent, the Canadians signed him to a five-year, $42 million contract. Now that's a average annual salary of $8.4 million. Mm -hmm. that's not bad for a player in terms of average annual value, like especially for him. It's a good yeah. contract. Yeah. But it's all up front. $38 million signing bonus. <sighs> the Molsons were taking, they were, they were betting, they were gambling, and Mark Bergeron were gambling, that um, Tom Dundon was not going to fork the money up because right. the Hurricanes at that point were seen as a relatively cheap franchise with an internal cap so they, they took that risk because the signing bonus was so expensive it pissed him off right they had no problem accepting it but he was not happy about it at all exactly so fast forward to this weekend yes Barry Kakinyemi was the well, third overall pick we did talk about offer sheets on the last show as well with guys like Pedersen and Zadorov yes. and just going over guys that might get sheets and was Kotkin Yemi on that list? Do you remember? I did not see this coming at all. So no, he, was, he, would, he would not have been on this on, on the list of guys that we would have talked about. So yes, very Kotkin Yemi has played three years in the league because he was drafted three years ago, third overall. Yes. Third so overall pick is... in 2018. This guy's got high, high potential according to at the very least Bergevin. Right. So it's a kid that they obviously liked really showed up his, his rookie year, not in terms of like putting up a bunch of points, but you watched him and you're like, Oh, th this kid's already getting it. He's a player. And then, and then in his second season in the league, he struggled. He right. really struggled and ended he up. He got sent to down minors. to the American hockey league. Yeah. And then towards the end of the year, then, the, then COVID happens they go to the bubble. He's on the roster, and he's great in the playoffs. He wasn't happy with that demotion either. No, he wasn't. And, like and going down to, uh, I think it was, was it Laval at the time? Yeah, I think it was, it was Laval, Laval at the time. time. So he comes back this year again, another okay season, and then really shows up at the play. So this guy, well, we know, <clears throat> in the two playoffs that he's been in, has stood out. Right. This guy plays well in the playoffs. He's, However, the, he's the one that actually scored the game six overtime winner to send the most recent first round with them in Toronto to game seven. Yes. This is, I think I'm going to sneeze. No, no. Okay. So this guy. I always hate that. <laughs> yeah. No, it's the second that you say you're going to sneeze, you don't. Um, I know. <laughs> this guy, third overall pick. Obviously, there's potential there. Right. No doubt about it. Like, let's not, let's not deny that. Yes. However, um, you look at the underlying numbers and even just the stats in general, $6.1 million. Yeah. That's a major so, – Here, here's the thing. I saw a tweet, and I 100% agree with this. Mm -hmm. This is a lose-lose. There, there's only one winner in this. And that is just very cucking. That is cucking yummy. The thing because... is, like, if if I can just explain yeah. this, there the reason why Carolina offered 6.1, aside from the the social media slash ownership pettiness feud that we can get into here in a minute, <laughs> you know, um, mm -hmm. is they see him as their second line guy. Because Jordan Stahl is nearing the end of his time there, you would think. Right. right. So they want to see something along the lines of, I would think, maybe Aho, Kakanyemi, and maybe Nietzsche. 
down right. the down the middle. Yeah. So that's why six point one is the base term on the contract or base money on the contract. Here's what I love is that <laughs> the tweet from the Carolina Hurricanes that says people don't forget. Yeah. Because the signing bonus was twenty dollars, and number twenty is Sebastian Ajo's number. Right. <laughs> I love that. I love that. It's so fun. I think it's funny, but here's the thing with this: it's a lose lose for one for for several reasons. One because Carolina not only is going to have to pay this guy $6.1 million, mm -hmm. they have to give up a first and a third if they don't accept it. And that right. means that's prop that's going to be at least his salary next year. If this guy doesn't have a really good year that makes you want to sign him long-term, if, if mm -hmm. he goes to Carolina, mm -hmm. well, you can't, if you don't tender him a qualifying offer, like I said, he becomes an unrestricted free agent. If you do, you are again paying him $6.1 million. Right. Now, if you look at, so, so the statistics and the underlying numbers for this kid through three years, it's not a small sample size, but it's not huge. And again, this kid's young. He's only 20. Has he, has he even turned 21 yet? I think he recently did. But that's the thing too, is like that 2018 class had a pretty strong first round, especially that top three. It was so, Rasmus so yeah, Delin and Kakanyemi at three. And who was number two? Um, what was remember. Number two, I have it somewhere. Dalin. It was Dalin. And again, I've got it right. I remember. Uh, was that Sveshnikov? I think it was. Yes, it was Sveshnikov. And then Brady Kachuk went at four, Barry Hayton five. Philip Zadina six, Quinn Hughes at seven, Folkfist eight, Vitaly yeah. Kravtsov to the Rangers at nine, and Evan Bouchard to the Oilers at ten. This kid in 171 regular season games in the National Hockey League has put up 22 goals and 62 points. Not bad, not bad, but again, not worth 6.1 million dollars. Not worth giving up a first and a third. Now, obviously, there's mm -hmm. still potential with the kid. But you don't give a player six point one million dollars mm -hmm. on their potential. You know, it, it's one of those things that sometimes can handcuff you in the future with with contracts because this kid gets six point one million dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, if I score forty points next year in eighty two games, why mm -hmm. can't I ask for six point five if I'm a restricted free agent? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like it just it, it messes with the market of things. I'm not a huge fan of the deal at all because it's like, it's hilarious. It really well, is. This but is it, also like, it makes no sense because they offered Dougie Hamilton $6.2 million. They obviously lowballed him because they felt that they could replace him. And they, and right. ev everything personality aside, they feel that they can essentially with Tony D'Angelo, like it's not going to be too much of a downgrade on mm -hmm. ice performance wise. He's it's fine. Not major. It's not major. Right. But then you do have to include, you know, the off the ice things. Well, the off the ice things and specifically the locker room things and yeah. the on the bench mm -hmm. things that yeah. he does. And that's getting away from Kakanyemi. But it is. I'm just saying my, my point ultimately with that was you were only willing to pay 6.2 to Dougie Hamilton. You were willing to pay <laughs> 6.1 for Jesper Kakanyemi. Right. Now, here, here's another point I want to make that I think can make this interesting. Mm -hmm. If you're Montreal, you could get a first and a third. And trade it to, this is something I, I don't know if you're going Jack to say. Jack Eichel. I was not going Eichel. Who are you going for? I was going, because I saw this tweet earlier. I wish I could remember who the, I think I'm just going to credit Hockey Hound, because again, those guys relay so much. Um, I want to say I got it from Angles and Frege through Hockey Hound. Um, they're looking at uh, taking those picks and maybe getting Christian Dvorak. Okay, that would work too. 
that would work 100%. Um, either way, doesn't matter if you're going big splash with Eiffel or going smaller splash with just getting to Vorak. I don't think I that's a think smaller this, splash. I think that at least like fills the void. It does. I think because I think at this point, Christian Dvorak is an upgrade and he's locked up. So he's an upgrade over Kakanyemi, and you wouldn't be paying him as much as you're going to pay Kakanyemi if you accept this offer. And they've already lost Philip Deneau. Mm-hmm. Do you really want it? Like, I say, I want to see them match it because they have until, okay, so we're recording this on August 31st, right? Mm-hmm. They have until Saturday, September 4th to match it. Yes. And it doesn't look like the talks are going anywhere right now. Right. But I still think they should do it because do you really want to toss after losing Philip Deneau, do you want to like toss guys like Paling to the Wolves and try to throw him up there? Or maybe like, I don't know what you do. Right. I don't know. I mean, because they also have Jake Evans, who I know that they like, but legitimately they don't really have many top high end centers at yeah and jake evans is a good time. center but like is he a second line guy no absolutely not so that so it goes to a point of you can let this kid go and still fill it because you're not just letting him walk you are getting assets back right and then you can use those assets to replace what you lost i i, I, I don't even think replace i i think you could upgrade because or, his or, numbers yeah. don't really stand out the underlying numbers are not great. He's good in the playoffs. He's been very good in the playoffs. There's no right. there's no denying that. But regular season, you would like a little bit more out of this guy. You drafted him sure. third overall. Let's, let's yeah. be real. After three years, you'd hope that he'd be a little bit better than what he is. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it doesn't this... mean that he can't be better, but, you know, the proof is in the pudding. And right now the proof is that he's, you know, a, th- a third-line center, sub-replacement third-line center at this point. It's tricky because they swapped. They would go back and forth between mm-hmm. when they had Philip Deneau, they would go back and forth between second and third. They're, let me tell you, they're really going to miss him. Oh, they're absolutely going to miss Philip Deneau. That's a huge hole to fill. Yeah. Um, That's a tough one. Can we, <laughs> can we just laugh about the pettiness and how oh of course of course like how much that originally like how much do you think the owners and the general managers really had to be convinced specifically for this one with the Kane social media with how much fun they are how much they had to convince Tom Dundon and Don Waddell to play along with like matching quotes and like all of this other stuff i tell you man i don't think it had to take much because this all comes from the fact that tom dundon is pissed this is one of those situations where i wouldn't be more i wouldn't be surprised if this was more owner making move the gm making move if i'm being completely honest i think he saw his opportunity to take a shot back in montreal and he took it yeah Sure. Is it maybe the smartest hockey decision? No, but you know. I will say that offer sheets in general are tricky because are. when you think about the last few before this, there was the Aho one that obviously sparked this weird social media blood feud. Mm-hmm. Right. And then before that, there was what the Ryan O'Reilly Calgary offer sheet in 2014 they don't happen often it was they do not happen often and that was ryan o'reilly and obviously colorado he was back on the colorado God, yeah colorado matched forever ago one. yeah um and all of the previous three if you want to jump all the way back to the shea weber offer sheet that we've talked about on this podcast before the one that he signed with philly that led to this whole freaking lock on you know killing nashville's cap space if he were to retire yeah. <laughs> um it's like 
are these really like a smart move to begin with to throw a guy an offer sheet? Cause there's just it's so tough. much, there's it so much risk. It happen often. There is so much risk. And, and this is why, like, it's part of the reason that they uh, changed the rules for free agency. You can only sign mm-hmm. guys to seven year contracts. Now eight, if you have them prior, you know, previously on your roster. Right. Um, you know, so, so today you wouldn't have a Shea Weber contract because the max you would get from it would be seven years. Right. But I, I said this on a previous podcast. I'll say it again. You need to go after some of these middle, middle guys. You, it's not about offer sheeting some of these stars, like going after Svechnikov or, or anything like that. Mm-hmm. You need to, to go after like a solid third line center right. or middle six winger. Now, here's the thing. The Hurricanes actually did that. The problem is they gave him $6.1 million. <laughs> Because they see him as a top six option, which he and could I gotta, be. I mean, he could he, be. He could yeah. be. He could be. But at this point, I just don't see it yet. And I just hate the idea of paying $6.1 million for potential. Mm. Production over potential, always, when you're paying contracts. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> Seth Jones. <laughs> yep. Um. I want to go to this because I was watching a video recently on I, I got into this rabbit hole of watching redrafts of first rounds mm-hmm. and I was watching those are, those are interesting yeah they're fun and I mean you know we both watch the hockey guy and his yeah. are always fun just because he's as funny and dry and sarcastic as he is yeah plus he also like he analyzes everything really, really well. He does. I like him a lot. Yeah, I love what Shannon does. He does a lot of good work. Um, and I was watching the one on Zach, on Zach Wierenski's draft, uh, 2015. Oh, my God. This first round looks about as stacked as 2003. <laughs> Yeah, true. Because uh, it's 2015, so that would be the McDavid Eichel draft. That's that's the Mick Eichel draft, and then so you got Connor McDavid and Jack Eichel, which I've got a little bit to talk about with Jack Eichel here in a sec. Dylan Strom goes three, which I mean, he's a solid middle six guy. Solid, but I again, like we talked about with Kaka, maybe maybe not number three. Yeah, revising definitely, that. De- definitely not number three if you're revising it. Yeah. Um, Mitch Marner goes four to Toronto. That, that's who would go three. Yeah. Uh, Noah Hannafin went five to the Hurricanes. He's good. Number six, Pavel Zaka to the Devils. That's one I'm sure they would do over. But he's still solid. He's still a solid option, but oh, definitely yeah. wouldn't pick him six. Maybe not. Uh, seven was Ivan Provorov, Philadelphia. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure if eight. they could take a mulligan for the guy that went right after him, they would. Oof, because eight was our boy, Zach. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Uh, number nine, Timo Meyer to the Sharks. Oh, yeah. Good pick that. there. Number 10, you ready for this? Miko Rantanen. Yeah. Colorado Avalanche. Such a huge top 10. And then you get into the later, like you get you into pre- 11 to 30. 11 to 30 is also amazing. Yeah, that's interesting. Like, if you're so, like, obviously, like, number one would be McDavid, number two would be Eichel. If you're redoing this draft, who would you put at three? Would you put Marner or would you put Rantanen? I personally, I personally would put Mitch. Yeah, I would go it's close. It's yeah, close. it's very close. I would go, I'd Mitch, still go with Mitch. I would go Mitch, then Nico. Yeah. Um, and then, um, like I said, just I'm going to blast through 11 to 30 here. Let's hear it. 11 was Lawson Krause to Florida. Yeah, I remember that one. He's no longer there. He's in Arizona. Arizona. 12, Dennis Gurianov to Dallas. Good pickup. That's a really good one. This is he was the, great in the playoffs when they oh, went to yeah. the finals. Solid, very solid guy. And this is where we get into the fishy business because this is when Boston – had three picks in a row and whiffed on probably all three of them. Well, they whiffed on two out of three. Well, 
Jake DeBrusque is a solid guy. He was picked. Yeah, but it's still the guys that go after is what makes it a whiff. Exactly. Because they took. Like consecutively after. Yeah, exactly. Because we got Jakob Zaboral at 13. You still got to see a little bit more from him. Mm-hmm. Jake DeBrusque went 14. We know what he can do. We know, yeah, we know he's a, a, a middle six winger who can score goals. Solid guy. And then the biggest whiff of them all, mm. 15th, Zach Senishin. That was, I want to, oh no, that was the pick. Because looking at this, it says it's the pick from the Lucic trade. Uh. No, that's the Dougie trade. Mm. That's a tough one. Yeah, that's really tough. Yeah, that's Especially rough. because 16 was Matthew Barzal to the Islanders. This guy is <laughs> so electric. Yeah, and then like weren't the next two picks Shabbat and Connor? Connor went 17th and Thomas Shabbat went 18th. God. And then Oh, ninth, that's 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 brutal. That's so brutal. 19th was Andre's brother of Geny Shvechnikov, which, uh, I mean, yeah, he he's... didn't necessarily work out. I hope he bounces back in the Jets organization. Like, if he's able to come up through training camp and earn a spot, good for Evgeny. Mm-hmm. But that was probably one of the bigger misses in that first round. Uh, Yoel Eriksson Ek went 20th. Oh god, that's a that's a good pick. Colin White with Ottawa's second pick. Yeah. Uh pretty solid pick there. Um Samsonov 22 to Washington. And then you're but in he had a the- rough year, but I still think he's gonna be a good goalie. Good 22 pick. Yeah. You ready for 20? Because <laughs> 23 and 24 are both all stars. Who are 20- the teams? 23, Vancouver, Brock Besser. Oh, Brock Besser, yeah. And then 24, Philadelphia, Travis Konechny. Yeah. <laughs> Jack Roslevic went 25th. Hey. That's looking like a really good pick. Local boy, 25, and now he's home. Uh, Noah Juleson, 26th. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jury, he's... Jury's still out on that one. But he's, he's struggling to crack lineups. Yeah. So he's... Uh, Jacob Larson is in the Ducks lineup yeah, right now. He's okay. So he's still he's, very young. So jury yeah. said it's still out on him. The guy that went after him, though, was Anthony Bavillier. <laughs> like him a lot. I love that's a, that's a good. That's a good pick. That's a very good pick. Um, Gabe Carlson went to Columbus, and we've had discussions about Gabriel Carlson in. I've, I've basically given up on that one. I don't know if I'm giving up on him yet, but it's just like, mm, this is really his, like, hanging by a thread chance. You know, at least I, I'm at the me. point in my life where I'm like, you know what? I am often wrong. So I'd rather be wrong and be happy than be wrong and be sad. Right. So I'm going to give up on this guy. And if he proves me wrong, hell yeah. Good on you, dog. <laughs> right. Uh, and then Nick Merkley rounds out the top 30, going to the Coyotes. Um, I yeah. think he's in... San Jose. He with... Oh, yeah, that's right, because he went to the Devils and then. Um, not a bad, ooh, not a bad second round either. Uh, Christian Fisher, Mitchell Stevens, uh, Travis Dermott, 34, Sebastian Ajo, 35. Yep. Carlo, 37. Yeah, this is such a wild. It's a good but draft. Mackenzie Blackwood went 42nd. Yeah. And Eric Chernak went 43rd. Oh, my gosh. Just okay. Seriously, go look back at the entirety of the 2015 draft when you have time. The draft. Because oh my god, like I said, that that has the makings of being like the most stacked draft since 2003. Mm. Oh, crazy! And speaking of 2015 draft guys. Uh, there are still a lot of Eichel rumors out now. I saw a picture of him uh, working out with some guys today. Uh, like he was just kind of hanging out in the background. Mm-hmm. So people were going, oh boy. But I don't think he's, I mean. There's, still feels I like we're not close yet on yeah. a trade. 
were not close and the crazy thing is he did just switch agents to pat Brisson mm-hmm. from whatever his name was i remember his all i remember i think it's like peter fish <laughs> i don't know but um he switched agents so hopefully that means something gets done sooner rather than later so that he can a hopefully get moved so he can get the surgery because all he needs to do to get this surgery is file this medical grievance yeah and then get that sorted yeah that's a and then b is get back on the ice because we miss him yeah um honestly i I just league is better when he is healthy I just miss his sellies like after he scores and he does this and he leans back. Yeah. And he's like, hell yeah, you know it. Or when or when uh the Leafs would be in town and he would score and he would just be like sit down. <laughs> sit to all down. The Leafs fans. I love the sit down. The sit down was great. You ready for some even better news out of that sure. dreary, crazy, weird opening? Karoka Prizov? No. But I mean, we could talk about him later if you want, because yeah. I there are rumors that they're getting close, close that they're that they're talking, which is nice because their deadline is tomorrow. Wait, is it is it actually tomorrow? September first oh is their deadline. It's the, it's the thirty. I didn't even realize yes. that. I was like, man, they do they they got some quick work done on this. Not even like remembering like how much time I told you this was gonna go down to the wire. Damn. I didn't (laughs) even realize that. I was like, wow, they're doing great work. And I was like, I didn't even realize it was 31st. It's tight, tight race on that. But no, that was not my good news. Uh my good news was guys out of our club. The first thing is Elvis is a dad. Yeah. Oh my god, I almost cried when I saw the photo and saw that the middle name was Matisse and I was like Knox Matisse Kivlenix. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the fifth line, man. He's a beautiful baby boy. But still, great way to honor him. And Absolutely. Yeah. Good for him too. I'm happy for Elvis. Knox is an interesting name choice. Yeah. I like it. Like, I mean, I don't know how Latvian naming customs go. <laughs> Obviously, you wouldn't but... expect you wouldn't expect like a, a a Latvian name to be Knox, though. You know, I don't know. It's, I mean, cool name. <laughs> yeah, I like. I it. could I could see him growing up to be a defenseman. That would be fun. <laughs> God, that'd be crazy. Just twenty forty five. Oh, he'd be, he'd have to be a bruising defenseman. Oh yeah. He would have to be like a Bufflin type defenseman. He's the next Tyler Myers. Just a huge, oof. <laughs> um, the second thing was our local boy, 29th overall or 25th overall Jack Rosselvick in 2015 and his top golf event that he, I think just held. I've never been to a top golf before. So it was Rosie's something. I can't remember. Shoot, I gotta look this up. Uh, Jack Rosovic Top Golf. Rosovic looks to give back to community with Top Golf event. Do do do. And uh, our guys at six fourteen helped out with that. Nice. Uh, it was called, oh my goodness, I'm just trying to read this article (laughs) just to find the name of it. It was Rosie's something. Right. Uh, I can't find it, which is a shame because I really wanted to shout the event itself out. But I mean, the fact that he's, you know, he, he came home in a, oh, here it is. Rosie's gear for goals top golf. Right. So proceeds went to his personal foundation that hopes to help provide gear to young players in Columbus. So that'll help um, 
families get hockey gear for their kids. Good on Jack. Yeah, I like that a lot. I love it. And it's nice that we have guys that we know that, you know, pitched in with that. Yeah, that that's what makes it really nice because the guys at 614 do great stuff. Oh, yeah. Matt does a great job with just running the whole operation. Mm-hmm. We do need to uh, get him on at some point. I would think yeah, sometime, sure. maybe, maybe after 10 to 15 episodes, somewhere down the line, we'll get him on. Right. Once we're a little more established. Um, so we got that. And then um, it looks like even more good news is on the way with the schedule because uh, it's looking better that we're going to go to the Olympics. That's good. Because the... Um, Can't wait to It wasn't the really Olympic fight it out for bronze. It was the... Uh, I'm just trying to remember everything off the top of my head, <laughs> which I'm surprised I didn't bookmark a lot more tweets and stuff. Um, the IIHF, I think, is going to take care of insurance costs. Good. For players that are going to go. So now they just got they, they to have... They just have it's to have Olympics. players, you know, fill out the rosters, I think, now. Right. So it's looking more like that's going to happen, which is awesome because we haven't had that in a while. Right, we haven't. And another thing regarding like international hockey, Columbus and I want to say it was Colorado were supposed to play a global series in Finland. And Oh, hell yeah. They were, yeah, they were supposed oh, it's to. It's a good do- opportunity for them to see Line A. Line A and Corpy. Get to go home and Rantanen and Rantanen. Um, it was, I want to say it was Colorado, it might have been Buffalo too, because I know they want to do they planned a, they planned a series with Buffalo, right? That I don't remember if it happened or not. Um, but it looks like, and this was from Portsy, uh, with the athletic that they're looking at rescheduling it. They were supposed to have it last year, and obviously, they didn't. Um, because of the world mm-hmm. um, and how things changed. But uh, they're looking at having it next year for tw- okay. some, somewhere in 22, 23. So that would be awesome. Okay, so not this upcoming yeah. season, but the season Correct. after. Okay. The season after when the jersey advertisement patches get slapped on there. Hell yeah, let's go. <laughs> um. Another signing we've got, uh, arbitration's done. Mm -hmm. Because Travis Sanheim, I don't think he, I don't think he made it to his meeting. Um, But he's got two years at an average of 4.675. Travis Sanheim was the last arbitration case to go. And Travis Sanheim is coming off a rough season, but I still like him as a player. We did talk about and Sanheim the, he will like be two weeks ago. $1.5 million less than Jesperi Kakinyemi going into next year. <laughs> I'm just going to do that with every player we talk about now. <laughs> just compare him to the offer sheet. Just compare it. Just compare it. Yeah. <laughs> this one broke last night when I was at work. Um, our boy in Nashville, Eli Tolvanen got extended yeah oh my god that's a steal of a contract three years 4.35 million total not even 1.5 average annual that, that's unreal piece of work that has been such so a weird off season for for david Boyle because <laughs> he's made some really good moves and then he's also made some really boneheaded moves so like i don't know how to analyze them from where they're at how do you just analyze david Poyle at this point because he's been there for 23 years he's been there for their whole existence yeah he's a good gm but he's a but it's he's like, kind of like going into that twilight like period where like, like the game's starting to pass him up a bit so he can still pull out some of these great moves but then he's also going to make moves like the ryan ellis trade do you and the suban trade yeah like well now granted the, the suban trade was actually 
a good one for them. It shouldn't have been, but it was. <laughs> Just because they were able to get rid of that cap. But like the fact, like, like they got rid of that cap and then what did they do with the money? Well, they also, when they originally got Subban, they went to a cup final. So that was, that was pretty nice. Yeah. And then they got out from under trouble, giving him to New Jersey. Um, well, kind of. They kind of got out of trouble because what did they use that money for? Deshane and Joe yeah. Hansen. <laughs> so, so like, so like, <laughs> those are two former Blue Jacket centers that he signed to eight million dollars per year, and uh, neither one of them is worth They're that. They're just not. Oh, I, I, I want Joey to succeed though. Like, I really do. You could, you could make the argument that those two players' production combined is worth eight million dollars. But the yeah. problem is, is combined, they're making 16. Right. Oof. And like the, the quality of the, like, Matt Duchesne's not a 1C on a cup winning squad. He's not. He's not, a, he's not a number one center. He's a really, really, really good number two center. I think Joey is starting to reach that point. Oh, I think he's long beyond that point. Like where he's two, three, maybe. Yes. I think he's a really good number three center. I think he is a painfully <sighs> average number two center at this point in his career. So sad because I loved him when he was here and his whole oh, thing. Oh, same, but I'm not too sad about it because he's no longer on my team. And that means we won the trade. <laughs> I still have, it's funny because like when I went to Nashville for um, one of my brother's paintball tournaments, we went into the team store. And I bought a Joey t-shirt <laughs> and now it's starting like the lettering is and the numbering is like starting to fade from the wash. Oh and yeah. The logo, and the logo is like breaking up and I'm like, Oh, <laughs> it's it. What's weird is it's breaking up worse than my Bobrovsky blue jackets t-shirt, which I've had way longer. Yeah. For like years. <laughs> so I I'm don't wear that shirt too often now though. <laughs> I mean, I wear it around the house, and yeah. maybe if I'm like, I don't know if I got nothing else to wear, maybe I'll wear it for a show every now and again just to have the jackets logo on the front. I don't know. Because that's the thing. Like, I love Bob. I, I loved him. I still love. You him. know, I love, and and like, I don't yeah, want because him to he not was, succeed. He was our guy. Like, he was our we, guy. We were the locket. Like, the two of us and Dylan McWilliams were like the three young huge Bobrovsky fans when like the whole community started coming together on Twitter yeah and like I loved him and I don't dislike him for leaving at all like my heart my heart hasn't changed with him and I don't want him to not succeed right but there's at least a little bit of feeling of vindication with him leaving getting so much money and not playing up to those standards right you know what I mean like it's a it's a human element. Like I'm not rooting for this guy to not succeed. I'd love it if he succeeded. Well, in because Florida, it's because not, I love the guy. Because but the, I wanted him to win here. Yeah, I wanted him to win here, and I mean he got us through our best stretch ever as a franchise. Yeah. And the thing about him leaving too was, I mean, he wanted to go cash in because he was thirty. And apparently he wanted to go to Florida because it was a nicer market. I mean, it's it's, it's South Florida. It's, like, yeah. The weather's beautiful, less uh, income tax. Right. Like, but the, there's a lot of reasons to want to play in Florida. But the contract that Talon gave him <laughs> just, you don't do that to a guy that's too specifically a goalie. When you know that goalies, once they pass 30, unless you're Mark andre Fleury, start to really deteriorate. I can really make... Here's the thing. And, and this could be another debate, if, if you want to make it one. I don't think there's one goalie in the world mm -hmm. who is even worth $10 million. Not even Carey Price. Not Carey Price, not even Vasilevsky. I, I think Vasilevsky's getting paid exactly what he's worth. I think he's worth nine and a half million. That's fair. I don't think you should ever pay a goalie more than nine and a half million. Give me your reasoning. 
Well, other than making room for everybody else. Make it, well, making room for, for everybody else is one thing, but like the other reason is usually when you give out that kind of money, and I say mm-hmm. usually, there are outliers. Vasilevsky's one of them. Right. Usually when you give out that, when you're giving it out to a guy who's going to be 27, 28, 29, maybe even 30, and you're giving it for seven to eight years. There's just no way those contracts were like Jonathan Quick is an albatross of a contract and he's not even making six. You know, right. like, like, like there are some, you know, contracts that you give out to goalies that are just absolute albatrosses that like aren't even close to that amount. And they were all great goalies in, in, in their prime. Jonathan, Jonathan Quick, Quick won two cups in three years. Like, and, and the 2014 Kings were unbelievable. The 2012, the 2012 Kings, Kings that beat, was not a great team, though. But they, they beat won. everybody to shit. They beat everyone. It, no, but like, like the, the reason. By, no, like they bruised everybody up. And Jonathan Quick was unbelievable. Yeah. He stole them a Stanley Cup. Now, the second one that they won, he was great in the playoffs, but that was a legitimately great team. That was a team win. Yeah. And they rewarded him. But the guy's not even making $6 million. And he's holding them back a little bit. Quick judgments. I'm just, I'm just here for making puns at this point. <laughs> Isn't that what you're always here for? Yeah, pretty much. That's my biggest strength as host is trying to make, trying to make puns and failing. I mean, the key word is trying. You got that part right. Sure. <laughs> Uh, we're going to go back into some heavy news. All right. You ready for this? Sure. <sighs> More Evander. <laughs> so what, what, do you do this time? what I jotted down was like, there's, there's an abortion for pay lawsuit that he's in now, oh, which geez. I have no idea what that is but it's just more deep shit. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's strictly related to his finances or if it's tying up his separation with his wife. I I don't know what an abortion for pay lawsuit is. So if anybody, you know, in the comments below or like tweet at me, can help explain this to us like and help us make sense to this please do because it's just it's hard (sighs) tired of talking about this guy in a bad light because he's such a good hockey player he is he's unbelievable i mean what was this guy this guy was on pace to to get what like 70 70 points this year 70 point guy in a 56 game year well he was on pace to get 70 points a, he didn't get 70 in, in 70 56. over 82 okay yeah. yeah yeah but yeah he's an electric winger yeah, he, was their, I mean, he was their he was best the player the arguably he, no doubt about it they're, like they're, it's not a debate because like, their goalie sucked their defense was terrible so you got to pick from the forward group who's the had, best forward yeah they had good offensive defense but in terms of keeping the puck out of their net. Uh. Brent Burns is brutal defensively. Eric Carlson and is so sadly and unfortunately not the same guy that he used to be. It's, and yeah, Evander Kane was your best player. It's hard. No doubt about it. It's hard. Coyotes, again. You ready for what's going on this time? Yeah, baby, let's hear it. Okay. So... Tempe. That's all you need to know. They're staying. They go could ahead. go to te- the, this is they could go to Tempe, but again, it's going to be like three years before they even have an, a full fledged arena for that. That's because they're looking for Tempe, but that's not the news that I'm trying to mention here. Um, do you remember the Mitchell Miller saga? Renouncing the no, I pick. completely forgot about it because it happened more than eighteen can months you, ago. Can you remind me? No, did you legitimately forget? 
no chance. Are you kidding me? No, screw, screw that guy. Yeah, this kid. I don't even like talking about him, but let's get this over with. He got signed by... <laughs> yeah, he got signed by a team. I don't know what league it is, but it's the Tri-City Storm. So, hold on. Tri-City Storm. That's that's the USHL. That I is. Think. Yes. Wasn't that where he played before? He got drafted? And then he was going to go to North Dakota? I don't... Alumni. When would... When was he supposed to be drafted? So he was a 2020 draft pick. Was he 2020? Yeah. Oh, shoot. Um, This is not... Oh, there it is. Uh, ooh. They got interesting alumni. Um, guys like Coleman and Appleton. Right. And Jaden Schwartz. Whoa. Um, so, okay. Here, I'll tell you right now. Starting in 2018, he yeah. played for the Cedar Rapids Rough Riders in the USHL. He played okay. two games during the 2017-18 season and stayed with them for the entire 2018-19 season. During the season, he was called up to the United States men's uh, national junior ice hockey team to play in after the 2018 world junior a challenge at the mm-hmm. end of the 2018-19 ushl season he was traded to the tri-city storm so, okay so he did play for the storm yeah previously so he had committed to play for the miami university so he's going to be a red hawk oh. but then he decommitted and opted to play to spend the 2019-20 season playing for tri-city and then he got drafted and he was going he then committed to uh north dakota and good because i don't want him anywhere around here right so you know this guy was going to play for north dakota gets drafted they were sent they were sent a pick after learning about his high school uh, not I, learning I, a- after it came out and they got caught with their hand at the cookie jar right and they were like oh oops i guess we'll give this guy up now that you guys know and are mad at us that whole chica run oh, this, this is what makes this, it so tough this because team i, I is, want this to work so bad uh, it's like every time it's like once a month there's there's something new with this team it's absolutely such a and it's it's, it's not mess. always on the same scale you know because this is no one of the higher ones up there. yes mitchell and, miller and the, yeah is... it's probably the highest one if we're being honest the way the armstrong runs things is up there you know uh or no not, not armstrong but the way uh, chaker ran long. things yeah the way chaker ran things too like like, like this just it's, it's like you know like the, the one meme where it's like it's like the mother looking back at like the kid in the car and it's just like why can't you be normal and it's like the oh kid from babadook yeah <laughs> this is just how i feel about the coyotes God. i just want them to be normal <laughs> the, mm, the babadook's a freaky fucking movie <laughs> dude i watched it for a class what, and what i was class like, were you watching that in oh god i want to say it was it was some culture film analysis class. I think it was the same class that we watched what we do in the shadows in when we did our Taika Waititi unit. <laughs> Cause I think we watched it around Halloween. So yeah, for anybody who's yeah. wondering, I know it's backwards, but <laughs> it's, this is literally like, like just, just put the just coyotes logo. The, and not the Kachina, put the howling wolf on it. Yes. Yeah, don't don't disrespect the Kachina. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the Coyotes. It's, it's just they're so frustrating. Like, I'm not gonna lie, dog. I'm getting a little like I like I want this to work. In order for this to work, we have to stop talking about them. And you don't want to know why we have to stop talking about them, because if we stop talking, you know, teams that are doing well, we're not talking about in the offseason. Right. You know, the less we talk about them, the better, because it means they're not doing anything right. really stupid. Exactly. <laughs> Or, like, have we talked negative about the Penguins once? 
I don't think we've talked the negative fact that about you it. are have the fact that you were like having to think. Even if we have <laughs> once, it means that you had to think about it. So like, oh no, again, I don't one think minor we've talked, it could be. You know what I mean? I don't think we've talked about the penguins once, even positively. They're out of the news. <laughs> like, like, good. You know, you know what I mean? Like, it, it it's nice not being talked about. I think the only time. Anything stupid. I think the only time we talked about the penguins ever since launching the show was bringing up Brandon Tanev's headshot after he got <laughs> drafted by the Kraken. It's a legendary photo. It's such a good photo. Yeah, I saw a ghost. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's one of the weirdest interviews ever. Like, I hated oh, I that interview it. because, like, like, I wanted to love it, but, like, the, I don't know I who was interviewing him. I don't know who was interviewing Here's the reason I didn't like it. I don't know who was interviewing him. How the hell do you ask the question, what was going on in the photo? And he's like, I don't know, I saw a ghost. And then you just don't ask a follow-up. Right! How do you what? win? Say what? more right now! <laughs> this is leading into your ESPN deal! Yeah, I'd be like, like whoa, 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 wait, 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 back say that up, something! Back that up, back that up. <laughs> you what? <laughs> yeah! wanted to hear more exactly how do you just pause and then go to junis dunskawi right you're like <laughs> by the way that butchering of that name was one of the funnier things out of that <sighs> draft show how the hell do you not know how to pronounce that but like that's a player you're picking. Like there's just highlights of this guy. <laughs> he's he's been around for a while. Because it was a Seahawks player. Do you think he's he gave so... a shit? He should. Like I mean, damn. <laughs> hey, this guy scored a, a goal and he scored an overtime winner in the Stanley Cup Finals in 2016. So he's been around for a while. Right. He, he's you know he's he's been around the block. He, like damn. Sure. It would have taken two seconds for you to figure out whether they pronounce this guy's name. Yeah. Just, or just ask. Yeah. Like, I but, um, just be like, hey, how do you pronounce this guy's name? Oh, it's Jonas Donskoy. Wow. I was nowhere close. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're going to the guys in your in your current vicinity in Buffalo mm -hmm. again. Because this will be Rick Jenrett's last season calling games. RJ's awesome. Hey, dude, he's just talk to anybody here. This guy is so beloved. 51 years this will be. 51 years. Like, unbelievable. One of the best. From the play -play start of the guys. franchise. Yeah. From one the beginning. Is one of the best play by play guys just in general, not just for like specific teams or anything like that. Like, this, this guy, I mean, I remember growing up, like, getting into hockey and I would catch mm -hmm. a Sabres game every once in a while, just, like, trying to learn more players and stuff like right. that, being like, I love this guy. It was like, I remember, like, being 10, wanting to get into the sport, and mm -hmm. I knew he was old, you could tell. Even and then. I'm, I'm in my senior year of college, and this guy's he's, he's going to be his Still last season. It's unbelievable. Games. It is unbelievable. Didn't the Penguins, long time, like, since... Mike Lang, yeah. Mike Lang he's just awesome retired too. Because he, he did radio for a while. Call, got to call. There's so many five, guys. Got to call five Stanley Cups. There's so many guys that teams have had for such a long time. Like the Capitals have had Craig Lotlet, Laughlin since like the 80s as mm -hmm. their color guy. Yeah. Back when Jeff Rimmer was doing games for them in the 90s. Yeah. Yeah, Jeff Rimmer's been around the block, too. I'm going to miss when Jeff goes. <laughs> like when Jeff's I done. Would, I don't even know who they would replace him with, but I think he's still going to be here for... Because Jody's a great color guy. He's color. He's not play-by-play. Play play. Yeah. And Jody's a really good color guy. Because He's he, going to be with them in that role for a while. Being a former player, he can really go into the analysis of that. Um, another guy that's retired officially now uh long live the king henrik longquist yeah man it's crazy so uh it's unfortunate because i wanted to see him this year but i know his problems actually allowed him to <laughs> retire <laughs> as 
you know, as a ranger, he didn't play any games with anybody else. He played his, he spent his entire career. His whole career as a ranger, was, his whole playing career. Yeah. As a ranger, which perfect. You know, and they are I mean, good immediately for him. Unbelievable career. because of course they are. They're immediately retiring his number at some yeah, point. Yeah, I love that they're not even, they're not even screwing around with it. Because I mean, for a while there, he, you know, for this current generation, he was the Rangers. So are they going to retire his number before a game against the Islanders or against the Devils? Oh, that would be interesting. <laughs> Either one would be really fun, you know? Right, because obviously those are two rivalries. You could do the Islanders because it's your number one rival, or you could do... You could do the Devils, the Devils because, because that was your Eastern Conference just... final well, I was just thinking that's another one of your rivals. And like, it was always like growing up at least, like mm-hmm. there was always a debate between Lundquist and Brodeur. That too. Yeah. You know, because Brodeur played until what, like 15. Yeah. When he had that weird stint with the blues. <laughs> when he, yeah. He took like one, two years with the blues. Legend- and he's, still, legendary. he's still with them. Isn't he? Isn't he like a in the front office? Yeah. I, I think he is. Yeah. Why legendary st louis though? blue it's like this is when the i guy... think of marty brodeur i think of the st louis blues yeah when i think of marty brodeur i think of jordan biddington telling him to frig off yeah <laughs> you know when, when i think of mickey kippersoff I, th- I think of him at, in his time with the san jose sharks <laughs> when i think of jerome ginley i think of him as an ab or, what about his time with the kings man Oh, that too. That's right. Legendary Seattle crack and Gavin Bay Ruther. <laughs> oh my God, man. He's unbelievable with them. B Tech Vanacek, unre- undefeated record. True. He didn't allow a goal. Didn't allow a single goal. <laughs> so, yeah, Marty St. Can- Louis, legendary <laughs> Calgary Flame. What? That's where he started his career. No. That, that's what makes the 20, 2004 storyline for the Stanley Cup final even better. Because after he got done playing, I think he played at Vermont for college. So he was really good there, went undrafted, signed with Calgary, um, could like barely crack the lineup, was struggling. Then he started to have a little bit more success, but then the regime changed. He had one year left on, I think, his ELC, and they were just mm. like, "Hey, we have like a new vision for the team." So they bought out his contract, and he went to wow. Tampa Bay. And then just a couple of years later, him with the Tampa Bay Lightning, they wow. beat Calgary in the final. Yeah, you know it's crazy because I was just watching Hockey Guy's career video that he put out today on Brad Richards <laughs> and how he won the cup with the Lightning, and then he won that cup with the Blackhawks. He was a very interesting player. Because he signed that huge deal with the Rangers coming out of free agency. Buying he was also it really out three with... years later after being really good with the Rangers. Yeah, like, and he um, he was really good with Dallas, too. Oh, sure. Dallas, He'll... like, in That was the his early... only All-Star game, wasn't it? I think so. I mean, so. I, I just watched the video, so I should remember that. <laughs> Dallas, from, like, 2007 to 2011, really? they weren't, like, a really good team, like, in terms of, like, Guys like actual wins and losses, but they had some like really good players because it was they had early guys Jamie like, Ben, they had Brendan S- Morrow. They had Stefan at the tail end. Who? Patrick, Patrick Stefan. Dude, he was terrible. Well, I mean, he was notable. <laughs> no, I'm just talking about like no, like actual good players like Louis Erickson in his prime with the Dallas Stars was unbelievable. Brendan Morrow, Brad Richards, like they had some really good players. Sergey Zubov, oh Zubov. God. I was Zubov gonna was say Zubov. <laughs> Meanwhile, Haskinen didn't Haskinen break his assist record in the playoffs? In the bubble. In the playoffs, he did. I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was unbelievable in the bubble. Miro was a monster. But anyway, getting off of that, extremely weird, like kind of. I don't even know what kind of tangent to call that. <laughs> Just remembering random players. Remembering players on teams that they've never on actually teams. 
like on teams that they're they're with. definitely not known for. Yeah. Calgary Flame Yager. <laughs> yeah. That's another one. Flames had a lot of those guys, I think. They have. They, they definitely have. Which is weird. Um, but yeah, all the best to Rick Jenner and all the best to Henrik. Mm-hmm. For sure. I really want to see Henrik come back as like either a goalie. They'll do coach something with the Rangers. Or like a front office something or other. Nah, man, get that guy on TV. That get, too. That, get that get that beautiful face on TV. Give him Jody Shelley's role. Seriously, why not? Like, seriously, give him color commentary on MSG. There isn't a single person on this planet who would complain about that. No. I don't think so. Um another rough one and this is honestly the last like sad story i just want to i want us to pay our respects to jimmy hayes that one that was brutal that was hard especially like the the video of kevin talking about him kevin's eulogy yeah yeah it was man still don't even know why and he was so young don't even know why he was only 31 like he had posted like a picture from like his kid's party like on his story (sighs) like the news came out and his story was still up on instagram no no oh that's so brutal god i'm gonna cry (laughs) it's been a rough off season with that stuff that's so brutal yeah, like losing those junior players in the car accident too. That was another one. And then Jimmy was what? Just before that? Yeah. And then there was another one, I think. Yeah. That and happened. That, before all that. of that. All of that on top of Matisse. And all that. Uh, yeah, Matisse too. Oof. <sighs> Such a weird grieving off season for a lot of fan bases. Yeah. And I think it was really nice. Like, did you see uh PK out in New York or no out in Dortmouth? With I all did the not know. PK was out in Dortmouth and they were out on the streets with jerseys and sticks. And I think Kevin was there. And they all just had I don't know if it was like a parade, but it was some sort of memorial kind of That's service sweet. for Jimmy. He's a good guy. He's a really good guy. Oh, yeah. Like, off the ice, amazing dude. Amazing person. Like, person. Not the player he used to be, but like, I mean, he's he's had an unbelievable career. And, and still guy. one of the most fun personalities in the whole league. Yeah, absolutely. Like, have you listened to his Ugly Duck podcast? No. I don't have enough time, unfortunately, but with all I'm the sure other it's podcasts good. that you do and that you listen to. Yeah. And then, you know, school and life. That, yeah, that too. <laughs> um, we got a couple more signings, and then there's one funny little story that I want to end on. These two signings, exact, like a day apart, same term, same money. Andre Svechnikov and Sean Couturier both signed extensions with their respective teams. So Andre yeah. with Carolina and Couturier in Philadelphia. Eight years, $62 million total for $7.75 million you, average. That's that's responsible spending right there. That's very responsible by both of those teams, especially for the kinds of players that they are. Yeah, like... You can't say that either of these guys are overpaid. No, I can't really say that they're underpaid either. I think there's a good contract on, on it's both sides. It's right where they need to be. It's weird too because uh, or, or, I would uh, say, you know what, just because he's younger, I would say yeah, maybe Svech is a little underpaid, but probably just because Couturier, he's like as young as he is because he's what, like 20, 21? Yeah. And then Couturier is mid 20s, I think, mid late. Is he 28 or 29? one of those maybe maybe i don't know 
off the top of my head at the very least. Um, super right good now. deals for both of those though. So he turns 29 in December. So like oh. he's 28 right now. Like this, it's a good contract. Yeah. Takes him to 35. 30, 37. Six. Six or seven, somewhere six to seven, I think. Yes, yes, yeah, exactly. But I mean, the money is total steal for both of those guys, like right where it needs to be. For the, for the stuff that for the two way game that Sean Couturier brings to Philadelphia, we could have had in Columbus. Kane. That Carter deal coming back to bite us in the ass again. It is. God, that's like the oh, worst trade ever. It's so brutal. God, it's so brutal. Ugh. And then you got me Stasvachnikov. I again I can't even freaking say it right anymore. <laughs> Thanks, Martin. <Oak. laughs> I can't even say it with a straight face. Such a fun You're have to guy go to, to therapy watch. for that. Maybe. <laughs> Speech therapy. <laughs> but he's such a fun player to watch. He's he so is. much fun. And you put him with Aho and Tara Vine and, and I mean, Natchez is really good too. Oh, you put Natchez on the right too? Oh. You could, yeah. It's not what he used to be offensively, but still, Jordan Stahl's still really good for them. I know. And yeah, I mean, like that big all... body defensive center that you can put second, third line minutes, very responsible. He can like... still, the fact that he can still play second is awesome at his age. Yeah, it is. Because he's what, he's what? Well, especially he... his size too, because your body's going to break yeah. down when you're bigger too. Because he's the second or third out of the four mm-hmm. in terms of youth. Because it's Eric, and then I th- think it's Jordan. And then Mark and then Jared. Is Mark really younger than Jordan Stahl? I can't remember. I looked at all four of them a few so days Mark ago. So Mark Stahl but... is 34. What I, feel I like mean Jordan Stahl is 33. I'm trying to think of birth years though. Like 32. Stahl's only 32. Stahl, okay. Stahl. So it's Jordan. Jordan. So Jordan. It's <laughs> Jordan. Okay. So it's Eric, then Mark, then Jordan, then Jared. Okay. Mm. I want to see Jared do more, honestly, because like the other three have done so much. Is he still playing? Jared? Yeah, dude, he was only born in ninety. No, he's what? He doesn't, he doesn't play anymore. What? He's thirty. He's thirty-one. He stopped playing in twenty seventeen. Oh. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, last time he played in 2017, he was playing in the EIHL, which I've never even heard of. I think that's a German league. That is the British Elite League. Oh, that's the British League. That's, oh, that's, um, what's his name? The Coyotes pick that everybody's excited for. Liam Kirk? Liam Kirk, yes. That's where, yeah. yeah. I can't wait to see him light it up as long as they can build something better around them yeah for sure before they become the arrows again or before they turn into the arrows right please arizona do something figure it out i've got a weird confusing headache and we're gonna have more of one when we're done with this little conversation did you hear about what happened over the last couple of days on espn are you talking about the uh the high school story bishop sycamore (laughs) Oh my god. I know that's not the <laughs> hockey story, but it's the funniest freaking thing I've it's seen in the a long time. Thing. They fired their coach today. Like, how do you get fired from a school that doesn't exist? Right. But the okay, the craziest thing to me, because we're a Blue Jackets podcast, this high school was allegedly located in Columbus. Like, of course it had to be. Like no. Did you see the highlights of the actual game? No. They're hilarious. Like one of the plays, it was like fourth and 15, and they were on like their own 15 yard line. The quarterback played punter too. 
So he was lined up in the shotgun. He took the snap and then went to punt it. And he, when he punted it, it went straight, hit his running back in the back, and then went oh, backwards no. and threw the end zone for a safety. Ouch. Well, these I guys. Was, were, okay. I was just watching it because I was interested. I saw that play. I was, cr- I was like crying, laughing for like the next 10 minutes. Weren't like all these players also like fully grown men and like they were 25, 26. They're like mid late 20s. There was like, I think, I think there was a guy who was like 35 and he tore his ACL. Yeah. <laughs> what was weird is like, I saw this side to side where it was like the actual high school kid and he's just this tank. Mm-hmm. And then you look right next to him at the the Bishop Sycamore guy who looks like he's forty and he's just glaring side eye at him like oh shit I'm in trouble. <laughs> like why did they do that? I don't. I know. just need to, I need to know what the end goal of it was. Probably just some way to get national attention. And what better For way to what? do that than to th- just airtime? That's literally the, just fifteen minutes of fame. That's all I think it was. I tell you, man, they're getting more than 15 minutes. This is the funniest thing that's happened all year it's long. It's gonna, dude, it's gonna trend through the whole rest of this week and more. And I'm already like, I haven't read it in full, but Schlosser, urinating trees, freaking. Oh, God, thread urinating on this thing. tree is hilarious. He is so funny. He needs to make a video on this because having to read this tweet, oh, he will. Out of everything He's 100% gonna make a video. It's like really hard to keep up with. Because everything just keeps pouring out and pouring out, and he adds more tweets. Because I remember looking through it last night at like before I was going to bed. I went to bed sometime around like ten thirty, mm-hmm. and he tweeted something like, "I promise I'm almost done," and his thread is still going. <laughs> yeah, it was like oh. one of the best things. The memes that came of it too were unbelievable. I know. All the pictures. How the, hell do you, how the hell do you miss that if you're ESPN? All the weird ass pictures. And yeah. then like everybody's just posting rando like stock photos talking about like <laughs> I'm gonna apply for the for the Bishop Sycamore High School volleyball. <laughs> we should play for their hockey team. J.R. Smith should have applied to go play golf there. wonder how he's doing with golf he's doing I hope he's fine. doing well i mean he's there for school too like he's there to legitimately go to school they come here to play school <laughs> we talk about practice we talk about practice i mean we talk about practice not the game not the game that i die for we talk about practice it's only game why you have well, to, you be, have to be met. <laughs> what was the most recent one of those? Oh, God. There was one that was like really, really recent. Oh, my favorite one. I just want to end on this, especially because I actually feel like this. I went to, uh, how, do you, how do you say politely, uh, uh, to tinkle. I went, I went, both games. I went to take a tinkle and came back. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not afraid of anything except bear. Big this, bear. <laughs> this comeback show hopefully we'll be able to do it twice a week from here on out yeah and it's probably gonna end up we'll try to do tuesday like tuesday's a lock tuesday's a lock maybe friday depends friday's we'll, gonna we'll be, see we'll see friday's gonna be hard because i work evenings um, okay could do it in the middle of the day yeah i only have one class on friday like so and then I'll be maybe, free after like 10 30. Uh, what about Saturday? I'll be free on Saturday. Saturday, okay. So we'll do Tuesdays and Saturdays because we, we can record it on Thursday this week, but after that, we're gonna have to do probably Saturdays, Tuesday and Thursday this week. And then from here on afterwards, yeah. it's gonna be Tuesdays and Saturdays. All righty, looks good. Um, but yeah, just to wrap up, uh, make sure to follow us at Snake Geringer and at By Jay Ashdown and the new podcast twitter i will be tweeting from that after the show's posted and retweeting some of my stuff just to tie everything together so please go follow that for updates on the show all right thank you dave
Love you guys. J. Jake Jackets, a podcast for fifth liners and all puckheads around. Follow the guys on Twitter at Snake Garinger, G A R R I N G E R, and at By J Ashdown. And subscribe on YouTube or wherever you listen. March on, march on.